Hello and welcome to The Treasured Page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space. I wanted to welcome you here today because I'm going to jump into a little project to get me back into the swing of things. Sometimes you can feel really unmotivated or uninspired when you're staring at a piece of paper with, uh, with the possibility, endless possibilities. And the possibilities uh, for one sheet of A4 paper with a rip in it. Well, when I find myself in these quandaries, I tend to just get the glue out and start sticking down scraps of paper that are uninteresting. Just pull out sort of the uninteresting bits right from the bottom, bottom of the tray stuff here. I want neutral, here we are, neutral, that's interesting, so we don't want that. Just want um, a very light background. Uh, so we're just, I'm just pulling all of this out. Uh, these are interesting, and then I'm getting really small. Some book page will be fine. That's a curved bit, so that's a bit more tricky. Wow, look. Oh my goodness, I can see the bottom of the scrap tray where the interesting bits lurk. Oh, and a charm. And the pin I was looking for, for the glue. Let's just do it. I've got some clear glue here. PVA, clear PVA glue. And we will just delve into the scrap. Where's best to put that? I'm left handed, so it'll be over here. And we'll just go for it. So I've just got a bit of brown parcel paper at the back in here. That's just to save my table getting coated and I'll just work in sections right. and then I can I'm going to overlap it as well because I want to cut round it at the end um, and then uh, you get a you just get a better seal more interesting bits so I might build that in in a minute I'm going to take some of this Okay, everybody, how are we doing today? I think this is a good one to craft along to. So if you just want to get an A4 piece of paper, some glue, wet glue we're doing today, but you could use glue stick, any glue that you've got to hand. Um, I just wanted to see if I can just build up texture onto a sheet of paper and bring in my scraps that are just getting slightly overwhelming here at the moment. And anything peeling up, I'm just sticking down quite haphazardly. Doesn't need to be perfect. Nothing needs to be perfect. Um, you do need a good seal so you can overlap things. And pop in some bits like that where you've got gaps. So I don't really know what I want to do. I want to do something and it definitely involves collage and sticking. But I do find that if I start off this way, it just allows me to, I suppose, relax and just... Uh, um, allow my brain, my other side of my brain, not the part that where we organise things, you know, our brains are constantly working out what we need to do. Um, but the creative side of my brain, it, it'll help me to focus and switch over to what I want to achieve or what I want to express. And uh, 
that's where we're at at this precise moment. And I don't have to cover the whole thing if I'm finding that I need to pause and then go for the next layer. But the, the larger pieces that we use, the quicker we can cover this. So if I pull out a few more, See, this one is just old bit of paper that got dyed. And this is a nice colour here. A lot of these have got torn edges as well, which is, is kind of cool. Okay. And the fact that the paper is wibbly and wobbly is fine because it adds texture and interest. So let's use scraps here. I've got some book page that's a thicker bit I might not want that doesn't need to be straight any which way get them down the glue on that way any way you want so we can put that down there and that down there and then good. so this was made with this green tone paper, actually that was better that way, um, was made with an onion dye that uh, that I dyed myself using an onion that I had actually grown in the garden. And it was red onion and you just use the skins and just simmer that in a pan and allow the water to reduce down and then the liquid that you get off of your onion skins that allow it to simmer for about an hour half an hour something like that depending on the volume if you've got lots it will take less time to to get a color and that's really all you do you then just soak your papers in the color afterwards and allow the paper to dry that way getting here now it's surprising how how fast you use up the scraps and sometimes I'm staring at those bits of paper and they do sort of overwhelm me so I've got so many so it's quite nice to just stick them down and then think gosh I haven't got many at all now I'm running out now I need my scraps back <sighs> plenty more when they come they just they just multiply in the junk journaling world. Let's put that in there. I think we're done. See, this is the other side of it. This is a tea stained paper. I don't know if you can see that. There's a slight texture of um, of that where I had a mesh or a, um, a netting, it was, um, like, a, like a netted fabric, I suppose. Meshed fabric and um, I just laid it, I soaked it into the tea and then laid it across the paper and it came up with a very slight crisscross effect on the paper, which is quite nice. So I'm hoping that that will show through. Okay, so that reduced some of the scraps. And here we are, as if by magic, all dried. It's got an interesting sound now. 
Um, so you could fold it in half and that could become part of a cover to a booklet or a journal cover, a, a smaller one. And you can start to see some of the bits are popping up when I bend it because uh, the glue has made it quite rigid. So if that happens, no problemo, we can get a glue stick and just put anything that pops up back down. And I think the best thing to do is to just trim them down. So where I've overlapped, I'll just use the back of the original piece of paper as my guide. And I'm going to work, I'm going to have a look at uh, my stencils because I've got some ones here that are lying about on the desk. So I'm just going to grab those and I'm going to grab um, my Distressed Oxide Vintage Photo ink and, and if I can find it, is this it? Oh, this is, I think I used, yeah, I used that for white. I don't want to use that one because that one is my white one. I need to write on it white with a pen, <laughs> a chalk pen. Just while I'm thinking of it, if I don't do this, it won't ever happen. And then I will use that for black or something and never have the white one. So that's that. That's out of the way. That's out of the way. What am I doing? Oh, I've got another one here. This is a new one. These are makeup brushes. You can get them online and um, they work really well for inking and stenciling. So we're using Distressed Oxide Vintage Photo ink and going in with the brush. And I've got this kind of cool could be either way that sort of scales a mermaid and that may be more vintage uh, maybe art deco so I'm just going to come down here with a few of those See what that looks like. Okay, yeah, that's nice. And I'll go over here. It works. Ah, that works if I, I wipe it rather than dabbing it, but sort of a sweep over. It seems to pick up more ink. So you learn these things as you go, don't you? She says, dabbing it in again. Okay. Right. One down here. And maybe up there. Maybe. Which way do we want that? We're going in that way, maybe. No idea what that's going to look like. Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, I like it. So now I'm going over the other one. I'm having to press quite firmly with the brush as well. It's sort of reminding me of coffee beans. Let's go up here. Come down here. And then I think that will do for that. Um, 
Yes, lovely. Right, let's leave it at that then. Now, where did I put the lid? That is the question. Where is the lid? I'm going to just take these off because they are inky and they need washing. I'll probably just step in them now because I've thrown them on the floor haphazardly. Um, I'm going to now do some stamping with an archive link so that it can't be moved because it is an oil-based ink and that one is Jet Black by Ranger and I need a stamp any stamp what's this up here flower I don't know what this is undisclosed flower stamp not sure okay Mm-hmm. bit modern. A little bit modern, if I'm honest. How about something more, more vintage-y? What have we got? Oh, I know. I know. I never use these. Let's have these. Oh, look. How about... I forgot I got this. Stampers Anonymous, Tim Holtz. Endemology. These are really expensive. They're expensive when you forget you have them, you know? Sort of not cool, is it? To not use something when it costs a lot. So we'll just put a bit of script writing on here as well. Because why not? Oh, that was a bit, a bit too much. So when you curve it, you just get a little hint rather than a great big load of it. Um, and I'll go this way with it as well. Okay. Um, maybe a bit there. I've never used it. Ooh, look at him. Never used him before. Just using an acrylic block here. And I'm going to add him up there. Oh, fantastic. Ew. <laughs> there you go. They're fun. They're like ants crawling around the place. Go that way. What else have we got? Um, ladybird. Oh, yes, please. I do like a ladybird. Ladybird on the flower. Ladybird here. Oh, beautiful. Ladybird upside down. Ladybird in the middle. A ladybird up the top. And over here on her side. And then here. Coming off. And a bit there. Okay. Little moth. Butterfly moth. Oop. And um, there. Oh, gosh, this is fun. And what else? How about this? Whatever this is. Another beetle. Mm, another beetle. Got rather a lot of beetles here, Mr. Mr. Tim Holtz. How about a bee? Is a bee? Is a bee more favourable? Let's have a bee. He's quite small, but he can nip into the. Mm, that one 
one didn't come out so nice. How about here? Okay. Not sure I love the bee. Nope, I'm not feeling so excited about the bee. I want something long. How about this one? Wow, you're... You are... What are you, a stag beetle? Can you leave in the comment below if you know what that beetle is? Please. <laughs> you didn't come out very well. So sometimes when the papers are uneven, they don't print out as brilliantly. No, see, he's not coming out. Right, abort, forget that. What was this? See a fly or a bee? Friend or foe? Not sure. Okay. Anyway, I think that's enough of the creepy crawlies. I wonder what else I could do. Oh, how about? How about? Not that. How about some? Maybe something. Maybe some with a stamp on it okay so how about this one what's that upside down um yes that is quite fun Stuck my fingers in it now. Ugh. And there. I'm not thinking about it. I'm just doing it. What else was there? How about this Royal Postal Service? This is a rather giant one. Oh, I'm getting in a right mess here. How fun. Postal Service. There. Oh, lovely. And... it again there uh, go off the page yes and get down there Brighton that's in West Sussex England down south I don't think I can fit oh yes I can there Perfect. 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 Now I'm thinking maybe tear sheets like uh, clusters could happen there. If you cut it down. Hmm. If I start putting on book page, is that interesting? I mean, it is interesting, but is that busy? Too busy? I don't know. So it's quite nice to have the little elements. Anyway, it's just a lovely idea. But I'm thinking I'm not finished, but there's a wonderful background. So now I could gesso over it with a white and then start doing other things. I'm interested in tearing it and seeing if I can make clusters out of some of the elements. I could cut it when you're not sure what it's going to look like. You can always put a piece of paper there and just sort of see what you would get. See that's quite interesting in itself isn't it? And then want another bit here just to see what that portion would look like if, if it would cut up into sections. I'm inclined to sort of rip some of the bits out and see where that takes me. Um, maybe I don't want to do the whole thing so I think perhaps I will cut it in half and go from there. It's just... Didn't 
really want to lose that uh, ladybird there. So now, let me just stick him back down. Okay. I mean, it's not going to be perfect because the tears aren't working out because some of the papers are directing me in a wibbly wobbly way. The tearing ruler, I just want to take that top bit off. So something like that works and looks really interesting. Would work very nicely with other bits of paper. You know, an interesting bit of book page all of a sudden. Oh, hello. Something interesting on a page. Yep. So let's carry on creating these elements. And I think because there's a bug on it. That becomes more interesting. See, you could put more on that side now. And each one becomes its own individual piece of art. So this is creating a collage paper, which is textured. I think that's not so interesting because there's only half of him. So we don't want that and that bit up there can come off. Right. In fact, the moth is very interesting, isn't he? So that we've got two moths, some sort of postal mark, half a thingy. Let's get rid of him. A hole, two hole. There we go, These are, that one's my favourite so far. Then this was this underwhelming bee, but showcased on there like that, he has instantly become a bit more interesting. There we go. And this. <laughs> Hello, there he is. Right, ladybird be sort of not sure then we've got this the one serrated edge or tear de torn edge deckled edge get it right oh nearly I've got to really hold this down firmly if you haven't got strength in your fingers um you might want to stand up and use your palm of your hand to put more pressure on only half of the image there so i'm not going to use that one I have to be a bit discerning because otherwise uh, we get, uh, I end up with scraps that I then don't use. I think I will tear that one down a bit. Because they can be torn down when you actually come to the project. Uh, we go like that, down there. And then this one. He didn't come out so well. And I've just torn off his thing. So I'm not so sure about that one. That's nice. That's nicer. That's very good. Okay. <laughs> So I hope you've enjoyed this fun tutorial on making our scraps and if you found value here please like and subscribe and above all else guys just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye bye now.